So, I'm a novelist. I don't do things all the time that I have never looked at a video and learning how to do. I learned on YouTube uh, to insulate your garage doors, and um, it was uh, pretty easy. And I'm going to show you how to do it really quickly. For um, came up to under fifty dollars for the whole thing. So let me kind of explain to you the garage right now outside. I just took a picture of it. It was 36 degrees outside, and I put the thermometer in here with my uh, temperature gauge and. I'm gonna give a few minutes, but while that's warming things up, I'm gonna show you uh, how easy it is and how simple uh, the process can be if you do it the way I did it. Trust me, I've seen other people do it, and uh, that's fine if they wanna buy the kit, um, but you don't have to buy a kit. You don't have to go to Home Depot to get it cut or Lowe's to get it cut. You can do it yourself, and it's very simple and it's very cheap, so um, let's get started. This sheet of three quarter inch or one inch foam, one side reflective aluminum foil, the other side regular white, and the um, I think the it's just right here, which is really awful the way they print this thing. It doesn't say, but uh, there's a standard for these. Let me see if I can find another one with a standard on it. Oh, and this is a three eighth inch, one half inch by three quarter inch thickness. So the 3 8 I'm believing is going to be the um, aluminum maybe, I'm not sure. Uh, Polyboard 1.44 uh, value, this is an R value chart, okay. So then the foil facing with airspace is 2.8 across the board. Um, this sheet comes in a 9648 4 foot by 8 foot sheet. What you're going to basically do is you're going to measure out how it's going to be cut per square or per rectangle on the garage door. I have a standard garage door, which is two, three, four slots, a two car garage. You'll see some videos with one person having a one car garage, which would be actually only two of these. So a regular garage door that they put into you, put in for you. Each one of these slots is different when it comes to the spacing here. These two are the same and the outsides are gonna be the same. On the inside is gonna be Forty-eight from edge to edge, and this one is actually going to be forty-six. So I cut off two inches on the edge here. Since one sheet is ninety-six inches long or eight feet long, what I did was I had an extra piece on the top, which is basically throwaway, which is this standard sheet here, and this one is fifteen inches. Not much you can do with it. You can probably use. Your leftovers for the three here, but you're gonna have one left over here and it doesn't look very good. So um, basically, these are cut individually. There's a gap that fits down here on, and there's a gap that fits over here on the middle ones, and only one gap on the side. On the outside, you have gaps on the inside and the outside, and also on end to end, which is slide in. Some people are making slices down here so it bends better. You don't have to do that. They just basically fit in. You gotta kinda jam it in there, and then if it does break down here, step it back in. It's no big deal. It's very easy to do. Very quick tutorial on how to cut it. Let me show you how to cut it. Very simple. If you have a straight edge, or if you have a T-bar, it's even better. I use a piece of wood, some RDF I had laying around for my straight cut. I measured it out when I needed. I got a marker, I marked it. I marked my 20 inches or whatever size I needed to cut. I got my blade. I laid my piece down. So I use a small piece. After the mark lines, I just cut it through once. When it was done, splits right where you cut it. The silver piece. I'm going to take it. Trim it off, there's your piece, very simple. And again, with this piece, it fits right inside this groove right here, and this slides in perfectly. I don't have to show you, try one. One sheet's gonna cost you $12.50, a sheet of 96.48. I had to make four trips back and forth to Lowe's because my car wouldn't fit each one, so I don't, you know, 
took a little more time to do it, and uh, but it's done, and uh, it's consistently good. I put the silver out, you can put the white out, but I heard that if you're gonna reflect the light from it, but there's no light, there's no sunlight in here, so I left the silver out, and it kind of gives me more light in the garage also, which I like that. The white, either way, it doesn't matter. I mean, if you want to spray paint it black later on, you can spray paint it, it's got a coating on it. Um, but you probably want to roughen it up a little bit because it's not sandpaper, but the, uh, or it's not, um, uh, there's not sand down, there's no rough edge. But if you do uh, paint it, let it dry for quite a while before you put it, because if you do put it wrong, it won't break right away. It actually bends pretty good. You can slide it in there. And it's not breaking yet, not breaking yet, not breaking yet, not breaking yet, not breaking yet. Not bad. And this way, same thing. Your groove is on the length. You see the lines on the groove. That's how it's going to bend. So you can actually bend in place, pop it in, pop it in. You're done. Didn't want to spend too much time on this video. It's very simple to do. This whole thing cost me under $50. And uh, let's check our temperature right now, shall we? So right when I started this earlier, it was... 12 degrees outside, and I didn't want to do anything, so I got my coffee and relaxed for a little bit. Uh, it's uh, 2 o'clock in the afternoon right now. Outside, it's 36 degrees. I brought my thermometer in here. I left it on the table for the last, since, since I started this video. And right now, it's been holding at 42 degrees. So, it's not a huge jump. But I do have a portable heater and I have a, a propane heater that I can turn on and it will warm up in here. Uh, I spend a lot of time in the garage and goofing around with things and it just seems like um, I can't because if it gets too cold in here, it's just ridiculous to play around. Um, for, uh, for my next project I'm doing, I'm taking a, a regular monitor like this and I am converting it into a digital picture monitor. I've already made one for my house. This I got at, um, uh, where did I get it from? Goodwill, uh, the two for, my, two for one or half price day. I got two monitors for $10. These are the lightweight Vizios. And the nice thing about it is you can get a HDMI to VGA connector. You put it in the back, you plug it in, I hooked up a Chromecast. You can hook up a Apple TV or even a Fire Stick, whatever you want to use. And what happens is it becomes a digital picture monitor. You can have a slideshow on here. You can hang it up on your wall, and I'll show you mine in a minute. And I came out pretty good, the first one I made. And um, very simple. The whole thing cost me the uh, digital. Uh, HDMI to VGA cost me $8. Chromecast is probably the most expensive thing. It cost me $35. That was $6 with tax. On a regular day, you can pick these up for about $15 at Goodwill. They, they have to be light. I have a... Um, um, it's a little bit too heavy, even though this is still on. It's not too bad, but it's a little heavier than this one. These are very light. Actually, hmm, it's about the same. But look at the size of the frame compared. You get more of a picture on this one than you can on this one. But um, not bad. Uh, I, I made a frame for it. It's drying right now. And with that, I basically cut 45s with a chop saw and um, I used a, a, um, my staple guns to uh, staple together, patched it up, sprayed it black, and then I'm gonna use epoxy glue to glue it around the, um, the um, frame over there or to the monitor. So um, that's a really quick little summary on that one. Uh, my next project I've been working on is my car turning into a camper. I do have a um, tutorial on that. I have a 2013 a Kia Sportage that's uh, actually turned into a sleeping arrangement for my wife and I and it came out very well and I actually have another uh, video that I'm 
put them together, then I put a tarp on it, and it worked out too well. <laughs> I'm looking forward to going camping now. A little too cold to go camping, but um, until then, we're looking forward to a couple trips uh, coming up. But uh, that's my garage tutorial, and that is my little uh, picture monitor tutorial that I have here. It's all hooked up, as you can see. I have a picture frame. Well, the frame is not on yet. I still gotta make it, but uh, it shows the time right here. And if you hook it up right with your Google, you can actually have a temperature here also. But on Apple TV, I don't know that one quite well. I need to buy an Apple TV, an older one. Don't buy a brand new one. You can use an older system if you want to use this. This is a brand new one because it's actually just the one that they had there. But um, oops. Um, make sure everything's screwed in properly because if it's not, it turns off. Anyways, so other than that, um, once this is dry, I'll attach this to it. And there you have it. So, um, again, a little, again, a little do-it-yourself kind of thing, kind of worked out well, I like it. Um, I have one inside my living room, like I said. It shows all of my personal pictures from my family. And again, not bad for uh, not having to spend too much money. The, the only thing is, is you have to get uh, a connector like this. There's other ways you can do it so you can get a flash drive and put into it, but I opted not to do that. I went with a basic uh, Google TV and it worked out better. So anyways, thanks for joining me and um, hope you guys have a great day.